Director Shu, could you please first tell us what are India's strengths in uh, this semiconductor industry under Prime Minister Modi's uh, ambitious plan? Yeah, uh, I would like to first briefly explain Modi's plan. Uh, this year marks probably his third turn as India moves to uh, the uh, general election uh, later. So uh, in uh, Modi's first two terms, he has, uh, we can say, arguably uh, successfully brought manufacturing industry back to the India. Uh, that includes, for example, the smartphone assembly, which was not in India before uh, the COVID-19 or before the uh, US-China trade war. And then following this uh, smartphone assembly, there are other industries that now uh, booming in India. And and after that, I think Modi and his, um, um, his um, uh, people understand that India needs to develop its own uh, semiconductor supply chain because if India has no uh, semiconductor supply chain, it will always be uh, dependent on imports of semiconductor. That includes um, imports from China, includes from, uh, imports from other countries. And therefore, I think it makes um, uh, it's very natural for uh, Modi to step from manufacturing of um, electronics and smartphone and other things to uh, semiconductor. Having said that, um, Indian is very different from other Western or developed country to uh, develop its own semiconductor supply chain. The US, Japan and Germany, they all have their own history and background in uh, semiconductor back in the 1980s or back in the 90s. But Indian is uh, pretty uh, pretty new in this industry and therefore he has to develop something to attract uh, suppliers that includes a very strong uh, policy support and also a commitment of the potential market as well as the talents which is now very important for India. So having all these uh, things put together I think uh, India is right now in the beginning to see a development of an ecosystem uh, of uh, semiconductor. However, there are still a lot of challenges mm -hmm. he has to address in the next few years. Indeed, so you have talked about the development of uh, Prime Minister Modi trying to bring in a lot of important industries in India. So Professor Leo, I understand that you have spent quite some time in India. So what's your first hand observation of India's semiconductor industry? Uh, I would like to echo uh, Christy that uh, politics actually is the driving force behind India's uh, attraction for uh, more semiconductor manufacturing capacities. So, uh, well, if we uh, depart from the uh, perspective of international politics, we can see that India has tried to uh, benefit from the uh, U.S.-China trade war since uh, 2017. And uh, from the inside domestic politics, um, BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, uh, which it, um, Narendra Modi belongs to actually uh, has a, a political agenda uh, focusing on development from the inside. So uh, for the past few years, the Indian government has launched uh, several um, big policies, for example, Make in India or the, uh, any other policies um, aiming at uh, increasing the autonomous capacity of uh, especially manufacturing sectors. So under this actually, uh, the uh, BJP actually has launched a very ambitious plan of increasing the general GDP to uh, to the growth into uh, five trillion US dollars uh, at the end of uh, 2024 or 2025. So in in order to attend that, they have to focus on uh, the manufacturing sector, especially the semiconductors. Mm -hmm. So talking about the new collaboration between Taiwan and India in this important field of semiconductor. Uh, of course, I know a lot of Taiwanese companies are very curious. How can the Taiwanese semiconductor benefit from this cooperation with India? Maybe we start with Professor Liu. Uh, I think uh, there are many uh, sectors or parts that Taiwan can benefit from India. First, India has abundance of uh, uh, talents, especially if with the focus on IC design. So um, currently, the National Science and Technology Con Council of Taiwan has been uh, pushing for uh, ambitious project called Chip-Based Innovation Project, or Jinchuang Jihua in Chinese. Well, uh, one of the very important sector is, or segment of this project is to attract IC design talents from different parts of the world. Uh, in order to attend that, the government has been trying very hard to um, increase the attractiveness of our environment, uh, either it's business environment or residence environment for the talents to uh, reside in Taiwan. So I think India will be a big uh, talent pool for us to attract. 
So this is the first thing. The second thing is that India has been trying to um, leverage its um, uh, advantage to become a manufacturing hub. Well, it's a very ambitious plan, I have to say, in the first. But uh, well, we, uh, I mean, Taiwan has been trying to uh, uh, grasp this opportunity to uh, either to uh, shift its um, supply chain or the uh, value chain from China to India. So uh, especially under this current geopolitical situation where the U.S. has been encouraged its um, uh, manufacturers shifting away from China and going into uh, um, uh, new markets like India or Southeast Asian countries, I think Taiwan can leverage that in a very good sense. Thank you. So you talk about the importance of talent and also cooperation. Now, if we take a step back, India is now trying very actively to develop its semiconductor industry. So looking to the future, do you think that the relationship between Taiwan and India in a semiconductor will be com uh, competitive or mutually complementary? Director Xu. I would like to first uh, briefly uh, touch upon this power chip um, uh, semiconductor manufacturing and its collaboration with Tata. Uh, this is not. Uh, this is different from uh, TSMC and other companies' um, investment in other country. This is more, uh, according to uh, uh, PSNC's own statement or press release, they focus more on technology transfer. So they are actually assisting Tata to build its uh, factory instead of a joint investment. So if it works, I would say that it will create a new model of Taiwan uh, in collaboration with other countries in building up a local uh, semiconductor supply chain. So uh, what that means for Taiwan industry? I think India has been on the radar for Taiwan investors and Taiwan company for, uh, for, for a long time. However, it was not until a uh, very recent year that we see booming of Taiwan investment into this country. And before that, it's usually Southeast Asian countries or even Latin American countries. But because Modi has demonstrated its policy support for almost 10 years, and right now uh, Taiwanese companies understand that they have to develop such a huge market especially since last year it has uh, surpassed um, Chinese population to become the most populated country meaning a huge market to Taiwanese company and therefore Taiwanese company can leverage on this a uh, very important significant and strategic uh, case for India and uh, uh, integrate uh, Taiwan's existing investment in uh, India including um, um, smartphone, electronics, and EV, for example, so that it can create a platform to invite more Taiwanese industry in uh, collaboration with Indian company. I think that will make a very uh, 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 beginning of Taiwan really working with India in developing Indian's own manufacturing industry.